Savior, thanks to God our Father and our Lord and Savior, in Jesus' holy name, and thanks for tuning in to Forest Written, where a man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. All right? Today, I'm going to do a lesson entitled, Lead Us Not Into Temptation. All right? This is something that we say in the Lord's Prayer. All right? We pray, we ask the Lord for specific things that we need. And one of the things that we ask for is to lead us not into temptation. All right? Because we're going to see in this lesson that even Jesus was tempted. But he showed us how he can overcome being tempted. All right? So we're going to start off in James 1. James 1 and verse 2. And it's, again, it's called Lead Us Not Into Temptation. And we're going to see that the trial of your faith work in patience. All right? James 1. James 1 and verse 2. James 1 and verse 2. And it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work in patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So that's one of the biggest things that we struggle with, is having patience. All right? They say patience is a virtue, right? So the only way we can have uh, the great faith, we got to practice patience. All right? We're going to skip down to verse 12. It says, Blessed is the man that endure temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. He said he's going to give those, he said those that love me, he know they love him by what? Keeping his commandments, right? If you keep his commandments, it's a crown of life waiting for you. All right, what's the kingdom of God? Verse 13 said, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man. See, again, people would like to say, even like the devil, the devil made me do it, right? But we're going to see in the next verse, like even we just read that God can't even tempt you, right? Verse 14 said, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bring it forth death. Because the wages of sin is death. All right? Lead us not into temptation. So let's go to Matthew 6 now. All right? Matthew 6 and verse 5. And we're going to see exactly the Lord's Prayer is talking about. All right? Matthew 6 and verse 5. Matthew 6. And verse 5. All right. It says, When thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that it may be seen of men. But I said to you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth thee in secret shall reward thee openly. All right. So when you go and you pray, it's supposed to be between you and God. All right, people like to stand out in public and do this big old prayer, and a lot of times they, they're doing it to be seen of men. All right, verse seven it says, "But when you pray, use not a vain repetition as the heathens do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth the things you have need of before you ask Him, because the Lord searches your heart; He knows your needs, He knows your wants. All right." Before you even ask him. Verse 9 it says, After this matter, therefore pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So again, God's will, just like he is in heaven, his same will is going to be done here on earth. All right? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Verse 11 it says, Give us this day our daily bread. Not only the spiritual food that the Lord give us through his holy words, but our physical food as well. All right, we ask for this daily bread. Verse 12 says, Forgive us our debt, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So you see where the, lesson come, the title's lesson come from, right? For the Lord's Prayer. We ask this when we pray. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Right? Because again, the devil is always lurking. He knows 
how to enter into the back door if you're not careful. All right? Lead us not into temptation. So let's go to Genesis 39. I'll give you an example. All right, Genesis 39 and verse 1. And we're going to see that Joseph was tested by adversity. All right? His brothers sold him. And even the thing they did to him, the Lord still showed faith. All right? Genesis 39. Genesis 39 and verse 1. Genesis 39. And verse 1, it says, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Pitapar, officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him of the hands of the Ishmaelite, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and made him oversee over his house, and all that he had, he put in his hand. So you see, Joseph was in a great position, although his brothers did the thing they did to him, right? They, they say they sold him, and again, all the things that Joseph went through, we're going to see even this example, again, the Lord still was there for him, because Joseph was righteous in God's eyes. Again, like, sometimes, sometimes people do things to you, and it might seem like a bad thing, but a lot of times God do it for your good, all right? It's a good outcome. Skip down to verse 7, it says, And it came to pass after these things. Then his master wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Behold, my master were not what is with me in the house. And he had committed all that he had to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I, neither have he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. And, and how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So again, not only he understood that's his master's wife, but first and foremost, he knew that God sees everything, and he's sinning against the Lord. All right, we're going to skip down to verse 11. It says, And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business, and there was none of the men in the house there within. And she called him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hands and fled and got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth, that she called to the men of the house and spake unto them, saying, See, he had brought in the Hebrew to us to mock us. He came in to me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass when he heard that I lifted my voice and cried. He left his guard with me and fled and got him out. All right, so again, this had to be a, a tough situation if you operate in the flesh because most guys probably would have took advantage of that the situation, right? But Joseph feared the Lord. He knew, again, that God sees everything, right? And we read, already read when you, uh, you, God can't tempt you. So if I tell you, you uh, act on that temptation, you're going off your own lust. All right? Skip down to verse 19. It says, And it came to pass, when his master heard the words of his wife, which he spake unto him, saying, After this matter did I serve it to me, that his wrath was kindled. And Joseph's master took him and put him in the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. And gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. So again, this situation, Joseph could have threw in a towel. Like, man, because everything was already just like, it was just already stuff going on with him anyway. Again, he was in a position, although he was rejected by his brethren, he was in a great position. But now, this lady came on to him, his master's wife, and he rejected her. All right? Now, the husband is upset because you go in court, you might tell you something, you're going to act for it, especially something of this nature. Skip down to verse 23, it says, The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. All right, let's go to 2 Samuel 11 now. All right, give you another example. 2 Samuel 11, and verse 2, and this is the example of with David and Bathsheba. All right, 2 Samuel 11. 11 and verse 2. All right, it says, And it came to pass in an even time that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in to him, and he lay with her. 
for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned into her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. And David said to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. All right, so again, God sees everything. And this is David. He, he even messed up. He was a man out of God's own heart, right? And we're going to see even he messed up, but again, God is merciful, all right? We're going to skip down to verse 8, all right? And it says, And David said to Uriah, Go down to thy house and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house, and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and went not down to his house. So David was trying to, you know, Get rid of him, let him go, you know, go home. I'm gonna send you this fool. Oh, you know. So Uriah was trying to be dedicated. He wanted to stay with the rest of those that was out here in this battle. Alright? Skip down to verse 12. It says, And David said to Uriah, Tell her here today also, and tomorrow I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and tomorrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. And then even he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his Lord. But went not down to his house. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hands of Uriah. And he wrote in a letter saying, Set Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle, and retire ye from him, that he may be smitten and die. So David's coming up with a plan to get Uriah to fight in this battle and put him in the front line so he can be killed. So he can try to cover up the adultery that he committed with Bathsheba. All right, verse 16, it says, And it came to pass, but Joab observed the city, that he assigned Uriah into a place where he knew that valid men were. And the man of the city went out and fought with Joab, and there fell some of the people that served of David, and Uriah the Hittite died also. All right, so you think that's, that's a quick solution for your problems, right? But again, remember, God sees everything. We're going to skip down to verse 26. It says, and when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when the morning was passed, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife and bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. All right, remember, King David, like I said, he messed up. Let's see, you know, the Lord is, is, is displeased about this. Let's see what takes place. Let's go to 2 Samuel 12 now. All right, 2 Samuel 12 and verse 1, and we're going to see the sword would never depart out of David's house. All right, 2 Samuel 12 and verse 1. All right, it says, And the Lord sent Nathan to David, and he came unto him and said to him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had a city, many flocks and herds. But the poor man had nothing, save one little ewe lamb, which he had brought and nourished up, and he grew up together with him and with his children. And he eat of his own meat, and drink of his own cup, and lay in his bosom, and was it to him as a daughter. And there came a traveller unto the rich man, and he spared to take up his own flock, and of his own herd, to dress for the wayfaring man that was coming to him, but took the poor man's lamb, and dressed it for the man that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man, and he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. All right, verse 6. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man, thus the Lord God of Israel. I anoint thee king of Israel, and I deliver thee out of the hands of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house, and thy master's wife into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if they had been too little, I would more have given to thee such and such thing. So basically, again, this is pretty much what the Lord was telling him. Like, you can, you know, you can have all these things, right? So again, we're going to see, again, when you do things, you might, you necessarily, you might, have, you're going to offend somebody or hurt somebody else, but again, it's God who ultimately offended. All right? Verse 9, it says, Wherefore has I despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed your right to Hittite with the sword, and thou hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and thou hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore, the sword should never depart from thy house, because thou hast despised me, and thou hast taken the wife of your right to Hittite to be thy wife. And look at Israel. 
today. The sword is continually doing what it's doing. All right? Lead us not into temptation. So let's go to Matthew 4 now. All right? Matthew 4 and verse 1, and we're going to read about the temptation of Jesus. All right? Even Jesus was tempted. But again, he's showing us, we're going to see in his, in his example that he's going to show us how we can overcome temptation. All right? Matthew 4 and verse 1. Matthew 4 and verse 1, and it says, Then when Jesus led up the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hunger. So Jesus had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. So again, Satan tried to come to him when he's probably the most vulnerable. We go a few days without eating or even a couple of hours without eating, we feel some certain type of way. So imagine 40 days and 40 nights. So again, when you weak, that's what Satan tried to enter in. All right. Verse 3 it said that when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And that's a true statement because, again, the words of the Lord is everlasting. He don't change. So, again, that's what we need to live by. All right. Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We know we need physical food to eat, but the spiritual food is going to cause you to live forever. All right? Verse 5, it says, Then the devil will take him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angel charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. All right? Lead us not into temptation. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 10 now. All right? 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 1. And the Lord can help you escape temptation. All right? 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 1. All right, it says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And were all baptized to Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and their rock was Christ. For many of them God was not well pleased, but it was overthrown in the wilderness. While our forefathers died in the wilderness. And a lot of times they died because of unbelief. Right? It's all the great miracles of the Lord, everything he was doing. So we're going to see even, we can learn from the things that they did, the do's and the don'ts. All right? Verse 5, it says, But many of them God was not well pleased, but it was overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our example to the tent, which not lust out the evil things as they also lusted. Neither be the idolaters, as were some, some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. We know idolatry is one of the biggest things that the Lord hates. You know what I'm saying? The first commandment he said, that's not the other God before me. So again, this is the season we're in now where you see all this idolatry worship. All right? So they, 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 they uh, he said, need to be a idolaters. Well, some of them, as it is written, verse 8, it says, need to let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and 20,000. The Lord said, anything you do against your body, again, or something like this, you sin it against the Lord. All right? Verse 9, it says, Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them are also tempted, and will destroy of certain. We just read, you cannot tempt the Lord thy God, right? They be told Satan. So they tried to, again, they tried to tempt the Lord with their nonsense, but again, the Lord destroyed them. All right? Skip down to verse 11. It says, Now all these things happen to, us, uh, to them for examples, and they are written for our domination upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherever let him that thinking he stand it, take heed lest he fall. Again, think about David. All right, I mean, he's gonna still be reigning with, you know, he's gonna still have his spot, but I'm just saying, he messed up too. But the thing is, when we mess up, we're supposed to repent and not do those things no more. All right, verse 13 it says, There had no temptation taken you, but such as is coming to man, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. 
but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. See, the Lord make a way for you to escape temptation. Again, we act on it. We're drawn up our own lusts. All right? Lead us not into temptation. So let's go to Galatians 5 now. All right, Galatians 5 and verse 16. And again, we have to walk in the spirit. All right, Galatians 5 and verse 16. Galatians 5 and verse 16. It said, this I say again, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So again, you walk in the spirit or we're in the flesh and body. And that's the body you have every day, your flesh and your spirit. If you walk in the spirit, you're not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. All right? Like I said, give us our daily bread. This book. All right? Verse 17 said, For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one to the other, so you cannot do all do the things that you will. But if you lay of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, immolation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So guess what? If you're doing these things, you need to repent now. Because again, we just read it, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. All right? Verse 22, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let not be desires of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. All right? Lead us not into temptation. So let's go to the next chapter over, Galatians 6. All right? Galatians 6 and verse 1. And we're supposed to bear ye one another burdens. All right? Galatians 6 and verse 1. It says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such as when the spirit of meekness. Consider myself, lest thou also be tempted. All right, so again, we got to, like, I always have to put somebody else's shoes, right? So you just don't know because you can. You just never know. You can be tempted and get caught up if you're not careful. Verse 2, it says, bear ye one another's burden and so fulfill the law of Christ. All right, bear ye one another's burden, especially when you have this understanding. You're supposed to keep us, each other on track. All right, skip down to verse 7. It says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall the flesh reap corruption. For he that soweth to the spirit shall the spirit reap life everlasting. Again, we supposed to be walking in newness of life if we say we're going to serve the Lord now and be under this covenant. All right. Verse 9 it says, And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Again, we got to continue pressing for that prize. Nothing should stop you to serve the Lord and give them all. Nothing should tip you enough to lose your soul. All right? Let's go to Luke 22 now. All right? Luke 22 and verse 28. And we're going to see that you need to pray unless you enter the temptation. All right? You get weary, you know what I'm saying? You got to pray. All right? Because you, you, could, you could get tempted. Luke 22 and verse 28. Luke 22 and verse 28. And it says, Ye are they which I continue with me in my temptation. And I appoint to you a kingdom as my Father has appointed to me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So you see here Jesus. He's like, you can uh, you, you are there which continue with my temptation. So again, if you go through these things, again, nothing should stop you but put for whatever to please the Lord and give his kingdom. All right, the Lord, like I say, he's the same. He does not change. So he said, if you continue with him and continue trusting in him, 
and not lean to your own understanding, then again, it's a great reward in the end. All right, skip down to verse 39. It says, and he came out and went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives, and disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said to them, pray that you enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them by the stones cast and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me, nevertheless not my will, but thine be done. So even Jesus, even he knew he had to die for the sins of the world, he said, don't, let, don't do it because of my will. Your will, your will is going to be done. Right? So again, if you think, what was Jesus' will? His will, will, his will, his will could have been something different. Right? But again, him, the, the Father and the Son are the same accord. So whatever the Father wants to do, it's his will. All right? But the Lord, again, he got tempted. He got weary. Not weary, but he, you know what I'm saying, he, even today, you know, he, he had a, Fleshly body, he understood the things that we have to go, we go through. All right, so he said, Father, I'll be willing to remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Verse 43, it says, and there appeared an angel to him from heaven, strengthening him. So even when you get weary, don't we go pray because the Lord will give you that strength, just like he gave Jesus strength. All right. Verse 44, it says, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it was great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to the disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow. How do you know when you be like sad and stuff like that? Or whatever, some of your mind, you want to go to sleep. Right? They were sorrowful. They just wanted to go to sleep. But that's when you're supposed to, again, that's when you're supposed to pray. Even I know I have to do that more. You got to pray even when you get like that. Verse 46 it says, And he said to them, Why sleep you rise and pray? Lest you enter into temptation. All right? Lead us not into temptation. So let's go to Hebrews 2 now. All right, Hebrews 2 and verse 1. And we're going to see that he's able to secure those that are tempted. All right, Hebrews 2 and verse 1. All right, it says, Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. So again, we got to continue taking heed. We can't get too complacent in thinking that we, we got it. Because, again, we can easily fall if we're not careful. Skip down to verse 9. It says, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that by the grace of God should taste death for every man. For we came him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, and bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of salvation perfect through suffering. You heard the saying that said, Whatever don't kill you, make you strong. So again, the, the things we go through is supposed to give us strength. All right, the adversity is supposed to give us strength. So like Joseph, he went through some adversity. But again, the Lord showed favor because he stuck it out. He continued doing the will of God. Skip down to verse 14. It says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he himself also likewise took part of the saying that through death he might destroy him to have power of death, that is, the devil. And delivered him through fear of death for all their lifetime, such the bondage. For verily took not on him the nature of angel, but it took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that they might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. So he came in a fleshly form, so he can be a merciful and faithful high priest to make reconciliation. Uh, uh, to make, uh, Reconciliation for the sins of the people. All right, that's a, that's a great thing to know that. You know what I'm saying? So, again, we got to give the Lord our all and not do the things that we know that's going to be not pleasing to Him. All right, verse 18, it says, For that He Himself has suffered being tempted. He was tempted. For Him that, and for and that He Himself has suffered being tempted, He is able to secure though them that are tempted. All right, lead us not into temptation. So let's go to 1 Peter 4, 